Keys, keys, keys. We need these. Garage, garage, garage. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and good morning. It is a balmy 15 degrees outside right now at 7 a.m. And I've got an awesome video that I cannot wait to make with you guys today. We're gonna be doing a modification that actually sat right here in my garage over the past three weeks that I kind of had to hide from you guys just so I didn't spoil any surprises. As you can see that modification isn't there, rather just a little pile of dust from my home renovation project, but everything is over at the shop. So let's run out here and get Ramrod fired up. Morning, neighbor. And as you guys can see, it's absolutely beautiful morning here in Pennsylvania. Nice, crisp frost on the ground. Feels super pure outside. We got to fire up 8-Ball, a.k.a. Ramrod, one or the other. That way we can get some of this frost off this thing. Let's see how temperamental she is this morning. I know you guys have been loving these cold starts. This picture's too good not to take. Get a little Instagram action in there. If you guys are really excited about this cold start right here, definitely tap that subscribe button. <laughs> In a video that I posted earlier in the week, I made the mistake of not cycling the heater grid. And you guys saw the result of that. <laughs> yeah, lesson learned. So we're gonna let this thing warm up for a few minutes. I'm gonna go inside, grab a cup of coffee, and then we're gonna head on over to the shop. Uh, let there be warm. Ever since we lowered this thing down, it is actually considerably easier to get into. Imagine that. Early mornings at the shop. I don't get to do this really often, but I am super happy that we're getting to do it today. Here's big old blackjack. Just look at the size of this thing. It is so awesome. I cannot even begin to express how much I truly appreciate the big lifted truck scene now that I've got this thing. Now, speaking of blackjack, we have a new limited product. It's this linear hoodie. This hoodie gets you entered for a chance to win that truck, or it could be your winning ticket. We got little brother and big brother, but by size comparison, it kind of doesn't make all that much sense. So we'll roll with it. But numerically, it does. Gotta cycle that heater grid. And then she fires right up. And we're gonna need this nectar of the gods. Seen a few blackjack. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna be installing a super rare and exclusive interior into 8-Ball. I like 8-Ball more than Ramrod. I might be switching it up back and forth for you guys. I really don't know, but that's my quick little warning. I personally prefer that name because I really like billiards and 8-Ball makes or breaks the game. And this thing is gonna be game changing once it's making a thousand horsepower. That's kind of just my thought process behind it. So without further ado, let me show you guys the seats that we're gonna be putting in this truck today. And then I wanna give you a little bit of background story as to how I came about acquiring them, why I wanted to go this direction, and hopefully how they're going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a set of SRT 10 seats that are going to be going into 8-Ball, and I am so excited about this swap because if you guys know me well enough by now, it's that I love form, and I love function, and I love comfort, and I love the complete holistic package. The seats inside these trucks, stock, are really not anything to write home about. Plus, the driver's side seat bolster has seen better days. We're basically sitting on metal here and it's very uncomfortable. So one of the first things that I had in mind was an interior upgrade. But before I could even speak to any of you about that idea, I got a slew of comments flooded in the comment section about converting the truck with SRT10 seats. And ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Like I said, I didn't even have time to start doing my research as to what popular OEM upgrades are before you guys suggested SRT. So I was already kind of made aware of it, but I didn't find these seats myself. Rather, I found these thanks to all of you, but one person in particular, Noah Wolf. Here's his Instagram right here. It's crazy how these seats came into reality because he actually sent me a message on Facebook saying that he saw these in the marketplace popping up in his feed a few times before he sent them to me. So I kind of thought about this introspectively and I thought that it was kind of like the world telling me that it was destiny. So I kind of thought introspectively about it and I kind of feel like everything happens for a reason reason, and that reason being in this situation that it was meant to be for 8-Ball. So that being said, I took Noah's suggestion and I reached out to Andy who is selling these. Now Andy runs an online store called the Used Online Parts Network. Now Andy is a really awesome guy that's actually located in Northern Pennsylvania that was selling these because what he does full time is he acquires the old SRT10 Viper pickup trucks or any SRT parts in general, OEM, Mopar, and then parts them out to enthusiasts like myself that are looking 
looking to acquire these super rare and very hard to find parts. So fast forward a little bit of time and I was standing in the presence with Andy and these seats and well, here we are. Guys, I encourage if you're looking for any SRT parts, the third gen owners, the fourth gen owners out in the audience to go check them out. They have everything that you can imagine and if they don't have it, send them a message and I guarantee they can find it. What's cool is they're an online business so let's just say you're out in another area of the country but you're looking for a specific product off of the SRT pickup trucks, they got you covered. So real quick guys, these seats are out of a 2005 SRT Viper pickup truck and it was the regular cab configuration. Now from what I understand, that is more advantageous for our specific scenario here with 8-Ball because of the fact that these actually recline all the way up and a good ways back, as you can see. They can get a good amount of lean on if you want. Now, it worked out so wonderfully well because you can also find SRT10 seats out of crew cab trucks, but in the crew cabs, they literally only recline to like right about there. They really don't recline at all. They pretty much sit straight up and down. Now, I don't know why the crew cabs were different from the regular cab SRT pickup trucks back when they were produced, third and fourth gen pickups, but it happened to work out really well to have that extra adjustability both forward and backward. Now, the passenger side seat is fully manual, and these will bolt right up to the existing locations in the truck right now, which is great. The driver's side, however, is power bottom, and then, of course, manual recline back. So we do have an extra wire, I believe it's this one right here that we're gonna have to figure out what to do with. Luckily, it's very simple. It's got a hot and a ground. That's literally it. So if there's no connector inside the truck, which is basically a 50-50 shot of exploration right now, so we'll find out soon, then we'll basically be able to take 12 gauge wire and then run power to those through another accessory outlet, which shouldn't be that bad. Now I've done a little bit of research as to what this conversion entails, but I haven't gotten all of the details. So this is kind of somewhat of an experiment. I don't want to talk anymore. I'm really excited about getting these in because not only are they going to look sick, not only is it one of the sickest OEM Plus upgrades ever, but best of all, they are so comfortable. So boys and girls, without further ado, let's start ripping into this. exaggeration, it took me all of 10 minutes to remove the stock seats. Four bolts on each side, eight bolts in total, and then you've got six nuts that hold in the center console. You could take the whole assembly out in one piece if you had additional help. In this instance, I don't, so I did separate them. Really not that hard though. Two bolts on the back of the center console on each side, and then one bolt on either side up front. So this is what it looks like. I'm actually going to get everything nice and cleaned up with our handy dandy shark over here before I will go ahead and reinstall everything. You don't get this kind of access every day. But before I do that, if you guys can recall one of my older uploads where I ran into some issues with my C-pillar speakers, it's uh, those ones in that yellow box right down there. I'm gonna go ahead and reattempt to install them being that I have all this nice access. I don't have to bend and contort myself in weird ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this storage box out, which I really love by the way. The Minimax didn't have this in the single cab configuration, but the Dodges have a lot more room in the back area. And this is nice. I stored a lot of crap behind my seats in the Minimax, but I was always reaching back and digging for it and it would roll under the seats or over there, whatever the case. This is really nice. I love this a lot. Sorry for the little squirrel moment there. So I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna work on those speakers real quick and then we're gonna get back to this install where we need to kind of try and figure out our wiring situation.
absolutely outstanding progress has been made here in the last half hour where we were able to pull everything out. We've got our nice new C-pillar speakers installed. Kind of cool you can see the yellow for the JL Audio speakers that we installed. Took your advice and just ended up doing some simple drill and self-tap measures to get those speakers secure. Unfortunately, the speakers that Crutchbase sent me were four hole mounts, whereas these were three hole. They didn't align, so I just went ahead, tapped some holes, and then used some self-tappers to get those nice and secure, and they are not going anywhere. I was also able to get the interior cleaned up. That was oh so satisfying for my gurus that like to keep their things nice and clean. I love seeing the purity and the freshness of the carpet that's been kind of unused and untraveled in a 15-year-old truck like this. Super awesome, got everything nice and cleaned up. Also went ahead and deleted the factory jack don't really need that being that we're rolling around on these new forces, which I like. Plus it's a small little weight savings, I guess. That wasn't really the motive for it because we are gonna be adding some weight with the new seats. And speaking of the new seats, that's pretty much where we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this cargo box. That's just three simple bolts, one, two, three. And then we're gonna be ready to rock and roll to get these things installed. The big unknown is whether or not this single plug right here will in fact power or not power these seats. Pretty excited to find out. I hope they do. If they don't, we're gonna have to run power otherwise, but only time will tell. Let's give it a shot. completion of this installation and so far it's been an absolute blast. I love when things fit together just like puzzle pieces. So we're getting to the point now where we've got our front hardware in but we need to get all of our rear hardware lined up and in order to do that to fit our gun back here we need to make some clearance and that means uh, this is the moment of truth. Now I plugged it all in and I actually didn't test it beforehand which was probably a little naive on my part. But I did leave access to our other connector, which is right over the on, the on the other side, and I figure if I have to run wires, I'm gonna run them under the seat, I'm gonna run them down here to the kickboard, and then through to the power, which is right in this general area. So the moment of truth is, does it work? Maybe the truck needs to be on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold. False alarm, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh God, I'm nervous now. Wait, did I connect it? I didn't, I didn't connect it. Oh my God. I just got so freaking nervous. Wow, I was gonna say, look at me go. Uh, third time's a charm. Let's get this connected real quick. Yes, 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 yes. This is amazing news. All right, so we're gonna move it all the way up. Oh my God, guys, that just took so much work off of our plate right now. This is incredible. We're gonna go ahead and throw these back bolts on here real quick and get them tightened down. And then we're pretty much in business, guys. Dudes, we did it. We have an SRT swapped Ram. This is incredible. And I think it was literally the simplest install that I've ever done on any truck modification ever. That might be an exaggeration, but for the magnitude of this change, how big of an impact it makes and the amount of ease that it had, I'd say that it's a chart topper. So before we shed some natural light on these new seats here, I got some routine maintenance to do. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna finish cleaning the interior. By the way, if you haven't checked out our new detail product line, definitely encourage that you do so. Amazing feedback on that. Wouldn't sell you guys anything but quality detailer. I love to keep my things extra minty. Practicing routine maintenance is like one of my favorite things just because it creates peace of mind, knowing that I'm protecting my investment and then hopefully it treats me well in the long run. So definitely check that out. Plus it could be your entry to take home blackjack. But before we get this thing outside, I am gonna go ahead and change the oil because you never know what the previous owner did or how long they wrote out the oil change for. Like to do that to make sure everything keeps staying nice and fresh. So I'm gonna knock that out real quick. I'll see y'all outside. So I actually completely lied. We'll show you guys the interior here in a minute, but I found something that I wanted to share with you guys. I made a small little discovery as I was taking care of flushing the engine oil and it's a pretty cool one too. I wanted to do this on Rampa Smurf, but it was already actually done. So I wanted to use it as an opportunity to show you guys. So I had to take the intake elbow out to access the oil filter. All OEM everything, by the way, when I change my oil and I use Mobile One 15W40. We're gonna take a look at the turbo here, and if I shine the light inside, you guys will see a little ring that's actually kind of somewhat bent right now. It's this ring right here. That one is called a turbo silencer ring and it's held in with this simple pinch clip. So we're gonna actually go ahead and pull that out right now because that's actually trying to quiet down our boost. Now I get, <laughs> it kinda cracks 
cracks me up to think that the GM engineers all sat around a room and they were designing the airflow engineering and somebody spoke up and said, you know what, those turbos are such a nuisance. They just make too much sound. We should throw a ring in there to try and reduce the sound of turbo spool. I gotta have a conversation with that guy, man. Like, I don't know what these people are thinking. But needless to say, that negativity is gone. <laughs> Shoot, guys, camera died. Well, turbo silencer ring is out. We kicked that negativity to the ground. It is right there. That little tiny piece of aluminum restricts our turbo from breathing. We can't be having that. This top side creeper off Amazon was probably one of the best shop investments I could have ever made. It smells like I'm in a porta potty. A really, really freshly visited porta potty. God, farm living is so good. I'll tell you what. Whatever these local farms out here using these fields, it's potent. I don't know what causes that strong of a scent or an odor, but I kind of feel like it cleans out my uh, my breathing system. All right, but enough about the manure. Ladies and gentlemen, what are we thinking about the SRT10 interior? Driving over here was blissful. Super enjoyable, super comfortable, super function inspired. Feels incredible, guys. I love it. Turned out absolutely incredible. And what's cool about it is these bolsters even act as a nice means of holding your seatbelt. Before, it would kind of go behind and when you're sitting in the truck, you'd have to like kind of reach around and grab it. But now you can kind of just let it sit right here and you're ready to rock and roll. They just turned out so sick. I am beyond pumped. The colors already match the whole interior with this kind of like dark gunmetal gray slash black color that they had from the factory. Everything lines up flawlessly we were able to plug and play we were able to get power and we were ready to rock and roll now the center console is completely the same you've got your dividers that are all included but then if you flip this up and you open the bottom it'll actually give you another storage tray or i believe the factory amp went there on these srts so i don't know exactly what i'm going to use it for but once this is all bolted down this shroud is actually completely sealed around the bottom of the carpet, which is nice because it can act as another storage location for detail spray, for instance, or whatever the case might be. So we did gain a little bit of storage capability right there, which is nice because we're in a single cab and ultimately it doesn't have all that much room. Now let me take you guys over to the passenger side. The passenger side seat is totally manual, so it doesn't have any power or anything like that. But like I said, everything lined up completely perfectly and now we have SRT seats swapped into a 5.9 third gen Cummins. I think it's a really cool swap to retrofit what is basically offspring of the Dodge Viper in a way into a Cummins single cab. Now I know it says SRT 10 and we don't have 10 cylinders. So maybe down the road, I'll go ahead and just stitch in SRT six right here. I feel like that would be a cool little touch, but for the time being, you know, I kind of think that this is cool. I got to trim that a little bit right there. Those kind of things happen over time, but I kind of like the fact that it says SRT 10, just because you know exactly where these things came from. Once more, I want to thank Andy from the used parts network for hooking it up with these seats right there in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. My third gen owners, my fourth gen owners, or if you're just looking for a specific SRT part, likelihood is he probably has it and he can probably hook you guys up. So definitely check out his website. That link is in the description below. Now let's jump inside here and start this thing up. Oh man, guys, these seats feel absolutely incredible. The way they bolster your back, you feel like you're in a sports car, straight up. The bolsters on the side feel super nice. They fall into the curvature of your abdomen comfortably. It's not like they're forcing you forward or anything like that up in the shoulder. Sometimes these race seats can have a little bit too much bolster right here and then you go from a comfortable relaxed shoulder position to kind of like a scrunch forward shoulder position and that'll that'll wear on you over time now this side bolster here definitely does need a little bit of reconditioning as when you jump out of these trucks you kind of go leg here and then you can see how it pushes the bolster down really bad it lost most of its padding which isn't that big of a deal so i'm probably going to bring this to an upholstery company so that way they can work on building that back up 
too similar padding like here on the passenger side. And that's also a testament for what happens when you don't have running boards on your truck. When you're sliding right out to the ground, it really takes away on the seat. So we'll probably have that updated, but nothing too crazy. Now I love the fact that these are suede inside and then leather on the outside. Get, adds really nice contrast. I know you can make cool designs with it. I think that's kind of cool too, honestly. The little kid of me is coming out right now. Now one unanswered question that I want to leave out to the experts watching right now that I'm sure I'm way more familiar with this swap than I was going into it today. There's one plug, which is right there. There's two wires on that. It's a simple hot and a ground. And I, whoa, 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 whoa. Feeling claustrophobic there. I don't know what they're for. Is that a heated seat function? I'm not sure. Is it something else that I need to be aware of? Or is that just power that would otherwise go to a power passenger seat? That's kind of what my assumption was but I don't know, and I really couldn't find all that much information online. Granted, I could probably go back to Andy and ask, but I wanna leave it out to you guys to see if you could help me figure that out, but that's kind of my guess. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome home. 2020 Denali, it's good to see you, man. We haven't done much with this truck lately, and I'm sorry about that. I know a lot of you guys wanna see more content with this thing. We actually have some up and coming modifications for it that involve our friends down at Peach Bottom Auto Body. So stay tuned for that. It's just a matter of fact that that's like an hour and a half south and then an hour and a half back north. It, it's kind of hard to bounce back and forth, but Sean's got some really amazing and very exciting things in store for that truck. And then of course we've got 8-Ball. Guys, it's 8-Ball. I'm sorry, Ramrod doesn't do it for me. I tried my best to adopt that name, but I don't know. It just, it doesn't feel right. 8-Ball is the make or break of a game and this thing's gonna be game changing for this channel. I'm not gonna say that it's game changing for all the Cummins ever built because I'm just like one little pea in the pond, but it's gonna be game changing for this channel and I really like 8-Ball, so I'm sorry. You guys wanna see something kind of funny as I just noticed this. Look there and look there. Do you see the difference? How did I not notice that? There's a window visor on this side, but not on the other side. I'm gonna have to take my time. Oh God, look at that nightmare. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna have to come back to that. Now, I actually just got off the phone with somebody that you might be familiar with. Firepunk Diesel, LaVon Miller. Does that ring a bell? Well, he and I had actually been playing phone tag now for the past two weeks, but we finally got a hold of one another because we both have really busy schedules, and we talked about the project, which is 8-Ball. So, I went over the turbo setup that we're gonna have, the fuel setup. We're talking about how we're gonna put that power to the ground, and then ultimately what kind of software is going to control it all to make it all make sense and make it go fast. And I am so excited to announce that LeVon will be doing the tuning for 8-Ball. I wanna make sure we're going with the absolute best for this setup because we have big plans. Over a thousand horsepower requires knowledge and insight and proven performance to make sure everything in the powertrain and the trans is doing exactly as it needs to because we are gonna be running a stock bottom end for a while. Now, more info to come on the turbo setup and everything that's gonna support that number. So stay tuned. Guys, if you're super excited about that news, give this video a thumbs up. So super successful day otherwise, that's where I'm gonna end this video. If you guys haven't grabbed some entries for Blackjack, the new limited linear hoodie is up right now. That could be your ticket to take that truck home. My likely gonna love you guys, do what you do best. Tap that subscribe button if you haven't already. Can't wait for 200,000 subscribers. Well, I'll see y'all in the next episode.